Something we should have done a long time ago is harness the energy from the bus's engine to charge our house batteries. So with the help of this device, we're gonna make that happen today. First, I wanna take you quickly through all the components that make the system work. So we have the bus batteries itself, which connect to the alternator in the engine. Then our solar batteries, also known as house batteries. And the third component, and the most important, is the DC to DC charger. I got this from Renergy. I went for the 20 amp version, but I think they have a 30 and a 60 amp. So the first step is obviously connecting them all together. So negative of the bus batteries go to the negative of the charger. Then the positive of the engine batteries go to the positive of the DC to DC charger. And I put a fuse in here. I think I went with a 30 amp fuse. Then the negative of the output side and the positive of the output side of the charger goes to your house batteries. The final component in this system is connecting the DC to DC charger to the ignition circuit of your bus. So for this, you just have to find a fuse on the fuse panel that is only active when the ignition is turned on. This is so that you don't drain the batteries of your engine if the engine isn't turned on. So this may seem like quite a lot, but it's really actually very simple. I'm gonna show you all the components you need and how they go together. So I'll link everything below, but here's what you're gonna need. Your DC to DC charger, some four gauge wire, fuses, lugs for the terminals, a switch, some more lugs, a fuse tap, a crimping tool, some 18 gauge wire, wire holders, some heat shrink, and some cable connectors. As you may have seen from the electrical build video that we have, I used to solder all of these, but I bought this crimping tool off Amazon. And honestly, it actually works really well. You just crimp it, put the heat shrink on, and it's really secure. So with this being said, I began by crimping some wires. We went with four gauge wire and then 5 16 lugs. So once I had the initial wires made up, it was time to chase them along the chassis of the bus and then into the battery box. Here they are. into the bus. This is where my propane line and my ground is. So I'm just gonna try and put a hole right next to it. Drill through and I should be good. Like as you can see now we're inside the bus. So this is all where our ele electrical is. This is where I plan on putting this brand spanking new device. And then here's the two holes I just showed you from underneath. I think if I just go to the right of these two holes, drill down, I should be good. There's the hole. So I'm gonna run underneath, pass the wires up and through. Um, Cassie, when did you help? Yeah. Got it. So now with the wires inside the bus, it was time to connect the whole thing together. So this was actually harder than it looks, trying to crimp the wires inside this tight closet. And then it was time to make even more wires. But hey, you get the picture. I don't need to show you all of this. With the wires all made up, it was time to put the fuse in place. I went with a 30 amp fuse. This is called an A&L fuse, I do believe. Really simple to install. So I snugged that down. Then once that was in, it was time to attach it to the DC-DC charger. Hey. 
Now that the input side was all sorted, it was time to work on the output side. So this just involves connecting the device to our house batteries. Pretty simply, just the negative goes to the negative and then the positive to the positive. Okay, future me here. It's a day later and we've finished the install. There's one thing I didn't show you which I'm just gonna quickly run you through right now. So this is where the unit actually is. Under our food pantry bit. Once you have this unit connected to the batteries of the bus and also connected to the batteries of your electrical setup, your solar setup, you need 12 volt wire. So this is 18 gauge, which goes in this D plus slot. And basically all this does is it'll only allow this unit to be turned on when the engine is turned on. That way you don't drain your engine batteries so they're not always drawing power from your engine batteries to your solar batteries. So I basically ran this cable all the way to the front and I'll show you that. So in here is where all the electrical stuff for the bus is. So you basically have to find a fuse that's only active once the ignition is turned on. So I simply just put a 12 volt tester in all these fuses and found this open space that was, there was no power going to it when the engine was off. But when you turn the engine on, there was power going to it. And that's what you want. So then I just used a fuse tap to tap into this fuse. And this is the wire that runs all the way from here back to the Renogy DC to DC charger. And then I also installed a little switch so I can control it manually. So maybe if for some reason our batteries for our bus are low, then I don't want it on at all. So I can control it manually here. So I'm yet to fully test the system whilst driving. Um, I did it yesterday, but I was only really driving for like an hour. So I couldn't really gauge how well it charged the batteries. But follow us on Instagram, I guess, and I'll put it up there how, how well this system has helped us or not helped us. Yeah, it's a really easy, cheap solution to recharge your batteries if you don't have solar or, or something like that. I'll put links to everything in the description so you can go grab it on Amazon. And I also get a kickback from that, so that'd be great. Yeah, any questions, leave them in the comments and I'll get back to you. Have a good one.